Feels like 2021 was just 11 months ago. Hey guys, MC Personal Finance here, and welcome back to another video. Now in this video, we're gonna be going over my credit card strategy for 2022. If you guys wanna see more, have any suggestions on what cards you think I should get, or your credit card strategies for this upcoming year, let me know that in the comments below. Also make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Let's get into it. First though, I just wanna thank you guys for the continued support you've been showing. Our subscriber count has been growing and that's all thanks to you. None of this would be possible without you guys. So I just wanna thank you for watching my videos, investing well, and not getting into credit card debt, which ties into what we're gonna be talking about today. So having a credit card strategy is nice and all having credit cards is nice in general, but if you're getting yourself into debt because of those credit cards, then having those credit cards are not so nice. As a very famous man said, he's not really famous, but just bear with me here. If you go into credit card debt, bing bong. And bing bong is not good in this situation. But seriously, credit card debt isn't something that you should have. Life happens and there's times where you're gonna have unforeseen expenses, but that's where having an emergency fund can really come through. But worst case scenario, if it comes between paying 22% interest or not eating, obviously the right choice is to put food on the table. But just in general, if it's between 22% interest or having to wait until your next paycheck comes so you can get the PS5 if you can even get one still, then making sure that you're not spending money that you don't have is a key thing into this game. I know you can call me a credit card nerd down in the comments below, but I embrace it. My friends make sure to let me know about it. Let's just go over some things that I'm going to be looking to do in 2022 regarding my own credit card strategy. First, I'm just going to continue to improve my average age of accounts, which may sound kind of contrary to opening new cards, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm going to continue to just raise my credit score in general, which goes along with keeping my utilization low and continuing to try to get credit limit increases where possible. And then we're going to be talking about the cards that I'm looking to get throughout this year. As my average of age of accounts is going to decrease, but as I continue to have those cards open that I opened when I just turned 18 early into the credit card game for me, those accounts are going to continue to age and continue to help bolster my average age of accounts so that when I open a new account, it's not going to have as much as an impact as it would if it would have been my only second credit card account. And with the utilization, I'm gonna to continue to try to get soft pull credit line increases every month or around there. Maybe not every month, but pretty frequently. On my cards, I do have soft pull credit line increases and continue to let my hard pulls fall off my account. I have a lot coming off in August, so my credit report will be a little more credit lending friendly to the different credit lenders. And the moment you've been waiting for, which credit cards am I looking to target and how am I gonna go about getting those cards? So I'm at 524 until August when my Amex Blue Cash Everyday card reaches two years and one month of being on my credit history. And in September, I'm unfortunately gonna have to go back to being at 524 after I apply and hopefully get approved for the Chase Freedom Flex to finish out my Chase Quad Effecta. If I get approved for the Chase Freedom Flex, I'll have the Freedom Flex, the Freedom Unlimited, the Sapphire Preferred, and the Business Cash. That would be it for me for Chase personal cards. I may like to get the reserve in the future, but with the card that I'm looking to get later down the line, it may not make as much sense to do that. And the Chase Freedom Flex card is Chase's 5% rotating categories card, and you earn UR points, so it'll all pull together, which is why in sense it's called the Quadfecta, with all those cards being together. Next, my Chase Freedom Unlimited card also falls off in November of 2022. So even though it was at 524, I'll be under it again. And I don't know what I'm gonna do specifically with Chase. I don't think I'm gonna target Chase specifically anymore for the rest of 2022, even though that's almost a year down the line now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Feels like 2021 was just 11 months ago. But I'm also looking to add possibly the Amex Delta Business Gold card the intro bonus hopefully will be elevated when I apply for the card. Amex is known to elevate the offers for the Delta cards around two or three times a year. So hopefully I'll be at a good time to catch that. And I'll also still be under 524 when I do apply and after I get approved, hopefully, because business cards don't report to your personal credit report. For the big whammy, the big card of 2022 that I'm looking to get in that Q4 period of 2022, it's the Capital One Venture X card. Now I've been doing a lot of traveling this past year and I don't see that slowing down in the future. 
as I continue to earn more income, earn more miles and points and cash back, and just be able to expand my horizons even more. Traveling is something that I really enjoy, and I'm blessed that I'm able to take advantage of these points and cash back to be able to use it to fuel some of my travel desires. And with the Capital One Venture X card, it has a $395 annual fee, but it gives you a $300 travel credit when you book travel through the portal and also gives you anniversary miles, which will help me recoup the cost of the annual fee plus more. And as I continue to travel places, just having that lounge excess, the TSA pre-check credit when I eventually renew it, just having access to that premium travel card is something that can't be overlooked in the credit card world. If you love to travel like I do, or even if you don't love to travel, but have to travel frequently anyway. Yeah, so let me know your credit card strategy down below for 2022. Let me know what your plan is, what your 524 status is, and any cards that you're eyeing or hoping that lender maybe drops a new card. Again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends. Until next time, peace.